This is really cool because there's some personal story to me and the next guest. This is called Still Standing Up with Craig Shoemaker. I'm directing it to the camera, still getting used to this. Then I got to direct it to his eyes that are on the screen up here. But Ed Begley, and we'll add the junior. By the way, do you go by Ed Begley Jr. all the time? I fit this with my friend Tony Luke. He's always Tony Luke Jr. But do you, do, are you okay if I just do Ed Begley, or do you yeah, need the junior Yeah, here it's Ed Begley. For movie or TV credits, it must be Ed Begley Jr., so you know which it is, my father or me. For credits in TV and film, it must be junior. But here in at the dry cleaners, it's Ed Begley. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's, a, that's an odd question I'm about to ask you, but does, do you, I mean, he passed away a, a good 40 years ago. Yeah. Do you get residuals from the movies that he was in? It's an, I've I do never not. Even thought For a while, this. my stepmother got them, and then they... Went down to nothing. There were, you know, Bonanza, Gunsmoke. They had after the 10th run, there was nothing anyway. So right. it's understandable that they finally went away. But he was in major motion pictures, though. You would think he would get something. That no, there were no residuals. Pre-1970, there were very few. If, in fact, many cases, no, zero residuals. Wow. That's, uh, I'm glad they changed the laws, but that's, yeah. that's absolutely Me ridiculous. So, so anyway, well, let's get to you. I have to thank you for something that you're not even aware of that I'm about to thank you. I have a hard time sleeping. Right? I've had a hard time sleep, but now what I do is I just gaze into the beautiful eyes of, <laughs> of Ed Beckley Jr. You kind man. Those, You're these, a kind young man. These, these, these dreamy eyes put me to sleep now, these dreamy blue eyes in black and white with your new book, which I'm reading. I'm three quarters of the way through. It's interesting, beautiful, inspiring reading. I love it. It's called To the Temple of Tranquility and Step on It, which I like that because I get that what that means. Yeah, I figured you would. Yes. Tell us what that means. What, what, I think it's similar to, I have a line, which you'll have a t-shirt, stuck between namaste and kiss my ass. It's like, this is. Yep, that's like, it right there. I, You're on it. <laughs> want that tranquility, but I want it now. I rushed everything and experienced very little in so doing. <laughs> yeah. Rushed every single thing. Then I decided I would get serenity or get tranquility from a bottle of vodka. And it worked. I got some form of I guess you could call it tranquility or sedation, but I got it. But then, of course, after a few years, it turned on me, and it took all that it gave away and then some interest in the bargain. Well, it's interesting you say sedation. is uh, You become sedated and you medicated. Do. And you don't experience things the way you're supposed to. You're supposed to learn from painful experiences and experience joyous ones. And if you're numb all the time from stoli and quaaludes and, you know, everything else that I took and cocaine and snorted heroin four separate times, did all that stuff, you're not learning any lessons because you can't feel. So I actually, when I turned 30, I was really basically about 17 and starting yeah. to learn the lessons a 17-year-old learns. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people don't realize this. You're avoiding pain. And it could be through any addiction, by the way. It could be through anything. Right. That you replace your own mindfulness, your consciousness with something else from the outside. It could be clothes shopping. I, mean, right. I, have to, I have to have new clothes or whatever it is, and you get into a frenzy. Speaking of frenzies, your stress level at this moment from 1 to 10. 10 like, I'm really stressed, and 1 is your absolute serenity. Where are you right now at this moment? And serenity is at the low end of the pH scale there? Serenity is yeah. like down low? Absolute serenity is a 1, and 10 is absolute really heavy-duty stress. Where I'm are probably you? Probably a two. A two. I spend most of my life a two. And most importantly, getting here and every time I'm operating a vehicle, I'm never, I mean, almost never stressed. And I never, ever, ever engage with another driver. Never. And when yeah. I get in front of me, go ahead. I'm in no hurry. I'm old. <laughs> I get there. You saw I brought in the crossword. I get there early and I do the crossword. Yeah. The jumble or the you know, connections or Wordle or whatever the fuck I want to do. I love that you're sharing this because we want to, this is called the turnaround. It's called still standing up with Craig Shoemaker, but it really is about what are some of the techniques that we can use? We need to be in solution in this society. Right. We're, not, we're not, we're divided. I love what you say in your book about there's certain people in your life that you, that you basically, it's okay. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger, that he's a Republican. And I love that you were that way because you, it's called reach across the aisle, which is not done much anymore. Right, sadly. We're, we're not, yeah, there's not a lot of unity that's going on. We're divided into these positions and echo chambers, and let's justify it with righteousness and anger. And I love that you start your day and you live every day in that peaceful spot where you're not trying to get something from someone. You're not trying to attack someone. Right. Yeah. And uh, rushing is a big part of it for me. Rushing is connected to many bad things, and it was for me trying to rush to get ahead, you know, to define people with a rush judgment of them. 
to rush to get somewhere. Then you're f filled with anxiety, and a guy cuts you off, so now you're flipping him off or worse, and people get killed over such things or injured. It's, it's just horrible. So I don't have any of that stress in my life, and it's just been life-changing. I can't remember the last time I got angry in traffic. I mean, I literally can't even remember. I couldn't tell you. Well, I think it also has to do with your, your business that we're, that we're in, is I don't, I don't think you're coming from a space of you need to have a job. You have to get a job. Because when you're in that place, you're not in your consciousness. You're not in your actual talent either. You can't be a great artist if you're into agenda or motive, you're motivated by other needs. If you think that you're going to get something from someone, you're, that's going to be your answer. And I think that I read this in your book is, is once you started to get in it, then the job started coming when you're trying so hard. Can you share a little bit about that? Well, you're into the mother load now. This is the important <laughs> stuff. This is the most important thing we could probably talk about. This is it, as Alan Watts so uh, you know, appropriately writes. This moment right now, looking at you on the TV, her turning, looking at you there. This is it. This is all that's really happening. Look at my watch. Now. There we go. I mean, I know. In the when, now. When I first sat in the chair a few minutes ago, I know that happened, and I know I'll probably get up from the chair at some point. I could plan for the future of that, but I try to live as much as I can right in the now, right now, through, down through the center of this moment as I sit here again with you, and it's beautiful. It's quite serene. Yeah, yeah. And it can be, and once we tend to ourselves, get ourselves well, then guess what we can do next? We can help other people. Yes. What, what a world that would be. Huh? And that could be through our talents. Exactly. If we do share the gifts and that's I, the, the, yeah. I rush that. I used to, yeah. okay, I got to get a job. I got to get a job because right. I got to pay the bills. Great. I got an audition. Yeah. I got the job. I got the job. Do the job. Okay. Learn the lines quick. Do the job. Get the paycheck. When they pay, they pay the Thursday from the previous Saturday ending week. Okay. Get the job, pay the bills. I got to get another job, you know, just all the time. Crazy. Never in the moment. I did it with woodworking. Got to go, got to go to Bonhoeff lumber, buy some rough wood, put it through the planer, <laughs> put it through the joiner, get the cross cut saw, get the dowels, put the glue in the dowels, sand the wood, finish wood, got to buy some more wood. <laughs> why, would, why the hell was I doing woodworking if it was like that? Enjoy the moment, right, going through the center of it with the feeling the, the yeah. blade cut the wood, a nice sharp blade going through the wood. feels beautiful when you really experience it. Experience it, yeah, experience Every moment, life experience instead of the doing life. Job. Yeah. The, yeah. It's not getting to, here's another eye-opener for me. We were going on a vacation, my first wife Ingrid and I, we were going up to Monterey. We had a new car, and it was wonderful, and we were in the driveway, and I was, as always, as I always was, in a rush to get there. So I said, why, hold on, why are you putting the playpen in first? Put it in the last, because in case we need it when we get there. The kids were young then. We'll get the play Don't put it there. You're putting it sideways. All this stuff's going to fall out. I was out of my mind. Don't you want to get up to Monterey, I said to her, and I realized <laughs> Monterey is not when the vacation starts. Uh -huh. It starts right now in the driveway. It started over breakfast. Begin at any time you want. How about right now again? Here it comes. This moment right here with you is all we need. And we, I didn't have it there in that driveway. Yeah. And what happens is, I don't know, but I, I know that this has happened for you. We, we, let's say you get a job, like you're, you're going south, and you t talk to Jack Nicholson about, you know, can I, get, can I get a part in there? What happens for me is a lot of times when you rush to something or when you're asking for something, it's, it's awkward for everyone. When you get there, I end up with imposter syndrome anyway because exactly. I, I, I realize how I got this. I might have convinced someone, but then I get there, I'm going, oh, my God, I don't belong here. That's the feeling that happens when I'm not living in the now, when I'm projecting to the future. Who am I gonna who am I gonna impress by getting this? I don't know. Do you have any of that that goes on? In, I have all of it going on. When you look at some of my early work, you can see the, the progression of what happened to me. I got these jobs early on without any real training. I had taken a few acting classes, but not much. And I got these jobs, Adam Twelve and Mannix and these different shows and Columbo and all that stuff. And I was working at it, not knowing what the hell I was doing. And I finally, after a few years of it, got relaxed in front of the camera. Yeah. Which was a good thing to be rather than uptight. Oh, God, the guy's dialing close to me and he's zooming in. What's he doing? How close is he? And I'm freaked out because the camera's right there. I finally got relaxed. They could move the camera anywhere there, any way they wanted. And I was relaxed with it. So I then spent the next 20 years, Craig, relaxed in front of the camera, which wow. is not what you want to see from a... A good actor you want to see the pain how they're dealing with pain and that's something i got from this wonderful teacher yeah I read Roy london right he said to me you know what i think is the most interesting thing to watch in how a character deals with pain i went yeah roy that's great oh you know we're almost out of time you I didn't mean, like that when you heard it at first yeah i didn't like it I, thought, what a I want to see every play is like garcia Lorca, blood wedding oh i'm in pain and oh <laughs> life is suffering life is what you do well yeah. you're waiting to die some play that had that as the lyrics mm. everything's horrible and painful i don't want to see that then i realized that wasn't what he said at all no how a character deals with pain how sophie and sophie's choice meryl streep what happened to this woman 
what was her choice? What do they mean by the Sophie's choice? What's the choice? What happened to this poor woman? And then you find out what happened to her. Yeah. And you're devastated having to pick between one, I won't say what, and another. If people haven't seen a movie from 1978. Well, you chose a movie that really does reflect that. That is the greatest, one of the greatest examples in the way they handle it where you don't know what's really going on and then it's revealed. Exactly. And then you understand that pain and you're watching how she manages her pain, which is a big issue in our societies. How do you manage pain? And I always say avoidance of pain is worse than the pain. And we, are, and we tend to, in our society, avoid pain. We avoid these things that are there and because we don't want to be present to it. We're afraid of it. And I know that you're not. You're not afraid I'm of not your now, pain. not now, but I had it all wrong. I was just relaxing from the camera for 20 years. How I still had a career and people would hire me, I don't know. That's kind of like everything's groovy, kind of hippy-dippy. I don't know what I was, but I get jobs being relaxed. And then finally I learned that lesson and things started to get better. Started to get better. Right. And now you're probably at your best work. I think it is. Yeah. And I've learned from people like another great one to watch is Joaquin Phoenix. See him in anything, anything that he's doing. That character in The Master. Did you see the movie The Master? Oh, yeah, yeah. Philip yeah. Seymour Hoffman. Yeah, oh, my what, God. Who is that guy? I think I know that guy, but who is this? What the hell happened to this guy? Jesus Christ, what, who is this? I've never seen it. It wasn't Joaquin Phoenix. It was some other guy. And who was he? But it was just riveting every moment. Riveting. Yeah. To well, see this person in most pain. of the parts he plays are that in Gladiator. He was Gladiator. This is how how did that he manage his pain? Guy. He so, manages pain through domination and right. you know really uh, uh, abhorrent behavior right. to make himself feel better because he didn't know how to deal with his pain. He had the pain of loss of you know his father paying attention to someone else and all that's the real trophy. primal stuff. Yeah, all of it. He's just an amazing actor. Uh, that's the best acting lesson I acting lesson I could ever get is to watch him. Yeah, well, he, yeah, he's, he definitely is brilliant in everything that he does, and he everything. becomes each character. So that's a guy that's – and he's and in his real life, he's also had to deal with pain, his brother, and things like that. Horrible, horrible. So, and instead of talking about him, let's talk about us and talk about how we manage through – I know comedy is really important to you. You've been in some really great comedies, and awesome. a lot of people might not realize this. I'm a stand-up for many years, but you're not known as a stand-up, but you were – wearing your cop uniform. <laughs> so. I was a prop comic, the lowest rung on the comedy ladder, I'm afraid. The, the prop I comic. disagree with that. Okay, okay. I'll I'm the one you. comic that is not a purist. I think props, look, if you're an actor, you've got plenty of props to use. You, they, they have a prop department. You've got a costume department, makeup, CGI, and everything else. You have assistants. Why do stand-ups think that we just need to be pure, one microphone, one audience, and us? No, bring in a prop. I think you should bring back the cop. <laughs> I rely too heavily. I, I might try that, but I relied, relied too heavily. You don't rely too heavily on it. I just, I had to have the props. I wasn't any good, I thought. But you're good without props. You're good with props. You can work with anything. I, I needed those props before I could even go on stage. You thought you did because you I weren't present. You weren't present at the time. I, I guarantee. Training wheels. Yeah. I guarantee you went up. If you go up with this energy that you have now, right, in the cop uniform, now you're self-deprecating or whatever it is. Now whatever naturally comes up is going to evolve into a funny comedy act because you're authentic. Right. Authenticity is the whole key to everything in art. That's right. If you can fake that, then you've got everything licked. Exactly. Well, I want to get to more of your techniques. We're going to uh, actually, uh, Ed, I'm still getting used to this. We divide this, we divide the podcast up. It's not like this tr traditional interview where we just go and we free form, which we've done before. It, it, we, we have to stop it here and tease, na -na 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 -na, tease what's going to happen next is I want to hear about some of your techniques, not only to deal with with life, but also how that reflects in your art and how you do approach your art. Because it's really important to a lot of people that are watching is our creativity, which comes from our creator, how do you tap into that? We're gonna find out those exercises. I'm so happy everybody's here. It's called Still Standing Up. Ed Begley Jr., how honored am I to have him? What a career, and by the way, a great book that I am in the, more in the middle, I'm like three quarters of the way through, well, and, I went, and I went right to the pictures as well. I, I love the pictures, by the There's way. There's some good pictures. There's All the, the ones uh, that I'm not in, I took. But this is one of my this is one of my favorites. Before he was anything, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I what just a, saw him last night, actually. Did you really? Yep, he was at a screening of a movie called Origin, a wonderful movie by uh, Anna De DeVernay. She's wonderful, great, great I, director I get, and writer. By the way, one of the things in your book that's unbelievable is you've had quite the Hollywood life, <laughs> Beatles and everything else. We're going to get to that. But more importantly, we're going to get to the perspective 
of who this man is and how he approaches his life and how his life has evolved and transformed. That's the key to me to everything is how are we going to transform from one person, this alcoholic, drug addict, self-obsessed person, I'm talking about myself, Ed. And then how do Got we me in on that number? How do we how do we get to the other side? We're gonna find out right after you come back next week or whatever the hell you you check us out. Not tune in. All right. Anyway, see you then. See you then, buddy.